Okay. okay. This is this is Ritualak that I'm drinking here on tears. This is very good stuff. However, I, I use this for a lot of more purposes than just drinking. I use it in a blending and stuff like that to protect my salads and things like that. That's more or less. The, what the ingredients in this, those things are in the Ritualak is the whole you have to understand this concept about it, why we are doing this. It's because when we sprout those beautiful little seeds, and the sprouts, and the seeds wake up with, like I said before, when we soak the seeds, we, we break them loose, and they get alive. They can dorm for thousands of years if we don't get them in water. But when we put them in the water, we wake them up. What that means, that the nutrition in any seeds that you have is totally bound into it. There is nearly impossible for the human body to get anything out of seeds, the nutritional wise, except soak it up, let it wake up, and then when these little sprouts come out on it, that means that the nutrition and minerals that the seed is, is bound into the secret of the seeds, it will get alive and it will increase from five to seven hundred times. So when I, like I said, when I let this stand in the water, those sprouted seeds, when I put them in the water first for 48 hours and then for 24 hours and then 24 hours, three times I can get out of one part, is that those minerals and vitamins that I have increased up to, up to could be seven hundred times. Now, I'm putting the water in and half drowning them. What happens then, the seeds and the, the, all this good stuff that's in the seeds now, they will release into the water. And the other thing too, which I found out, that this is full of the bacteria, lactose bacillus. Bacteria, when we talk about that, that's nothing to be afraid about. There is no bacteria, but this one is special good for your, for your small and large intestines to break down the food. It is the same bacteria as in the yogurt. But when we are talking about bacteria, we say, oh, oh, bike, that's horrible. But we need bacteria. We don't, shouldn't be afraid of bacteria. We should honor it because there's no bad bacteria. The bad bacteria is really the, the secret of the earth to clean itself. So if we have our banana peels that's rotten out on the ground, what happens? The bacteria comes and it eats it up and cleans it up so it looks so the banana peels disappear. And that is the secret with living food and living people. And when people have got certain time, certain amount of toxemia into their body by the cooked dead food that they have been consuming, chemicals and all kinds of other stuff which uh, we cannot avoid if we are living a civilized life. Uh, then suddenly after that, 10 years of doing that, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, or some people are lucky when they're just 60 or 70, they start to finally get sick. They get the allergy against this, they can't tolerate to be around anything. They can't tolerate paint, they can't tolerate anything. That doesn't mean that there is something wrong around them, that just means that the tox toxics in the body is get to a, up to a certain level and now they cannot tolerate anything around them. And most of the time what people do, they try to eliminate everything around them instead of looking in the mirror and say, how can I clean up these toxins and start to tolerate those things like I did in the young, older days. So that is the technique with this, uh, with this lifestyle. It's not to be an ultimate healthy or better than anybody else, it is just to have this, have a more good bacteria in the body than bad bacteria and cleanse out the old toxins. Okay, now I'm going to introduce you how to be uh, the best grower in USA indoors. Uh, the secret with it is, it's to be very, very simple. That's the secret. No big deal. We do the same thing as with the seeds. We first soak, soak them and then we sprout them. When the sprouts are coming out, they are close to be as long as the seeds, they are ready to be put into the soil. Uh, 
uh, I will show you the, my most valuable things in my whole life. And that's this one here. And that should be yours too very soon. And this, that is it. This is it. This is the most valuable thing that anybody can have. That's a pure, organic, nice, beautiful soil. No chemicals. Just put your leftovers, banana peels into it, and it should be, it should smell like beauty. You don't see the warmth because it's too dry, they are going down. My, my cheap slaves, I pay them very well, my slaves. I give them banana peels and they love it. Okay, so, ready? Yep. What we need for growing indoors is, we can do it in a few different ways. The most cleanest way and simplest way is to use a regular restaurant's tray. I think they are what, 11 by 14 or something like that. You've all seen those restaurant tray in a cafeteria. I put one tray down like this and because I have been doing this for a little while, I made myself a little guard like this just to like make less mess. You don't really need this but when you start to do this a lot you will make you some kind of guard around the tray. And uh, what I do now, I take this beautiful soil and I try to have quite a bit on the, on the tray. I put this in that much that will be at least one inch on the tray. Uh, I, never, I never spare the soil. I never spare the soil when I'm growing because the nutrition that's in the soil, I need them, I want them into my, into my greens. The more better the, the soil is, the more greener it is. Oh yeah, I see a little warmth here, but I lost again. This is a little dry, so the worms went deeper in the barrel. We have to excuse them. They, they are where the certain wetness is in the soil. So what I do, I take one of the brick masters tools, take that just to even this whole soil out, so it's just flat and nice and beautiful. I turned into grandfather a few few months ago so now I need glasses so <laughs> I take up the soils and put a I usually just put it in here so it's easier for me to take it out and I take them in my hand and try to even them out on the tray never put that much or many seeds on that they totally go over each other I'll just show you how I do it approximately This is quite enough, like this. I'm just, ah, just finished up this stuff. I don't think we have any. Okay, this is quite enough. What I do now, I, just a second, I just take this. You don't need a water hose like this. You can do it with a sprinkler system or like that. I just water it quite thoroughly now. I really soak it up, but not really that much, it starts to leak out of the tray, but enough to for the whole soil to get done. I take now, I even it out again a little bit. This is enough, enough watering for the soil. Now I take this guard off, and you'll be seeing how smooth and nice it gets. You have this like this, and see how thick the soil is? Now the roots have a plenty of space to go down and suck up the wetness. Now to fake it a little bit, because in the nature, the soil, there's usually the seeds goes into the ground, get wet, and they come out. We, when you have an indoor gardening, you can fake it. You can put something over it, you can put newspaper over it, or something like this, if you don't have enough trays. I have plenty of, plenty of trays that I have got over the years. So I put another tray over this one here. Now, I take this tray and I store it somewhere in a warm, dark place. It doesn't have to be that warm at all. 
but it's good to have it around 70 or room temperature the more faster it comes out if it is 60 or under it will be slower so that is it now we should bring it over to the grow room and put it in the store okay now we come in here this is the place where I store them my trays this is a very warm place and you remember the seats looks awesome here beautiful and what I do now I put this tray in a warm spot I usually put it highest if I'm in a hurry to get the trays I put it high up if I am no hurry I put it in the bottom to the floor so the cooler it is the slower it will grow up now you will ask when it is ready to take this tray off you don't have to be worried about it after two or three days this tray will be this far away from the plant the grass will lift it up if you put this tray too tight on each other, this grass can honestly break your house. If you put the tray from the bottom to the ceiling, it will lift up your house. So when it is up like a half of one inch, I take those trays, I take the tray off, and now I put it under the lights. To improve your home, about filtering your water. Most cities are dumping all kinds of stuff into the water, especially the chlor chlorine. Chlorine uh, is very bad for your skin, it dries up your skin, uh, it shouldn't even be in the water, nobody should ever, ever use chlorine, it's horrible, it's a chemical. So what I do now, in my house, uh, I'm an engineer of trade, uh, so I know a lot about filters, and I've been looking around and they're expensive, and if they're self-cleaning, I know they're very bad, because you can't have anything that's self-cleaning. The bacteria in them at a certain time, they will just start to grow. So I thought about those very cheap, nice, beautiful filters that I buy here in New England in, New, in a Home Depot for $17 a piece, this cartridge. I bought three of them for my house and uh, after a certain time I just open them up, take the cartridge out, I throw it away and put a new one in. So you can get those packets these black ones here have a special stuff in that will take more or less all of the chlorine out, 80%, 90% or whatever. So this is a very common way and best, cheapest way and best way to do it. This is the main line coming into the house and I, I just put a valve in here and then I took a line out here, the pressure goes into the filters, the water goes into the, through the out comes out here and up here again because this valve is closed and those are open when I want to change the filters I just open the close those two valves and if I need water in my house in the main meantime when I change the filters I open this one but in most of the time I do it when I don't need that uh, I have a hose here in my gro in my boiler room to water my greens very simple I don't have to been walk, walking around with a bucket. So this is what I did in the same time when I put those filters in. And because in the beginning I was just putting a bucket in here, so was, this is much easier. Okay, that is about the filters that you can do on a very simple, cheap way and the most best.